Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to talk to you about the Act 2 Telkin farming location which uh, is also referred to as the Acteos farming location which is the name of the Telkin. And in order to farm this location what you're going to want to do is port to the Valley of the Kings and then you're going to have to run to the Tome of Ramses which is where I am right now and basically run all the way down to the Telkin, kill him, rinse, repeat over and over and over. So, the reason that people farm this Telkin is because he has the best or second best loot table in Act 2, depending on who you ask. The Manticore is the only other enemy in Act 2 that has a loot table better slash similar as the Telkin. And I, I say this with uncertainty because I've read both and I have no way to check because I can't see the code itself. And, uh... Here's Acteos, wave hi to him. And uh, this boss is pretty straightforward. I'll explain the boss the next time we do it and his abilities. Right now, I'm just killing him very, very quickly, as you can see. And he dropped nothing for us, which is unfortunate, but expected. Each time you reset the run, you're going to be uh, running back from the Valley of the Kings Rebirth Shrine, which is right next to the Valley of the Kings portal, as you can see. And uh, we're actually going to use Colossal Form to reduce the runtime. I want to I want to go around this way just for shits and giggles, something different. So let me explain uh, the boss fight to you. He has, I think, five abilities. Let me uh, actually. I'll open up the guide on my, the guide I wrote on my other computer. So yes, he has five abilities, as I, as I remembered. The main one is he lobs a fireball at you, which is pretty basic. Don't have to really bring that up. The other one is the uh, mirror image, which you've seen him do at the end of the fight, where he splits himself into multiple uh, Acteoses, multiple Telkins. Oh man, one of these little guys followed me in. He wanted to be my friend that bad. Uh, he also summons enemies, as you've seen, and he does these lights of Ra from the ceiling. So, uh, let's go through these one by one. Okay, that one was the, uh, let me see if I can figure out which one is the main one. Okay, based on how much damage he takes. I don't want to kill the main one because then it'll ruin the fight. So, uh, one thing, this pillar is going to be like your safety pillar. You can stand behind this pillar and take almost no damage from the Telkin. He will not come up here to attack you because uh, he see how he just moved back to the center of the room. He, uh, he'll he never leave the center of the room because of the lights of Ra that he does, which is the lights that come down from the ceiling right here. He basically tries to stay within the proximity of where he does these lights of Ra. And... Uh, that's why you can stand behind this pillar and avoid the overwhelming majority of his attacks. If he like, if he comes up here too far to try to catch you, he'll reset back to his original position as you've seen him do multiple times. So that is something to keep in mind. And his mirror images do not reset, as you can see. Or maybe they do. So his Light of Ra is the worst ability that you have to watch out for besides his Sand Blast, which mostly only for melee. I'll explain each ability in a second as I'm running back to this boss a second time or third time. Okay, so for his abilities... Like I said, the fireball is his basic one. It kind of works similar to Volcanic Orb in Earth Mastery in the sense that he lobs it at you and then it creates a little like fire cloud on the ground that you have to get out of or don't want to stand in because it'll give you a dot. He also does the Lights of Ra, which are the burst of light from the ceiling. Those are probably his most deadly ability. And if you don't have high fire resist, I'm pretty sure it is fire damage. Yeah, it is. Uh, if you don't have high fire resist, they'll kill you. So keep an eye out on them and uh, avoid them at all costs. He also does the mirror image, which you've seen, where he creates duplicates of himself. That is uh, uh, fairly easy to deal with. You can tell the main one apart if you have any dots. Uh, keep a dot on him and you'll be able to see the damage ticking from solely him. 
I also think that the mirror images had uh, less, a lower level. We're going to check this time. Because, uh, let's see. He, he's level 77. He also summons these Tome Guardians, too. Yeah, see how his mirror images are level 92 and not level 77? So that's how you can tell the mirror images apart. And the lights of Ra always come down in the same spot, so so long as you basically stay out of where they are, you can easily dodge them. That little sand blast that he does uh, is an AoE attack that will disrupt any skills you're using as well as deal heavy, I'm pretty sure, physical damage. And Battle Mage Circlet, I don't actually need that, I don't think. Yeah, I don't. I have, have one already. But that's basically all there is to it. It's a very, very straightforward farming location, very straightforward boss too. And he, the reason for farming this boss is he has one of the best loot tables in Act 2, rivaled only to the Manticore, which uh, if you want to see the Manticore farming location, just search it on YouTube and you'll find my video about that location too. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out and I will catch you guys around the next one. Peace.